Today's show, we meet some strange and dangerous animals that Helen might come across as she kayaks down the mighty Amazon River. Hello. Oh, this is a rainbow boa. This is something you might find in the Amazon, and that's currently where Helen is at the moment. And I'm joined by Blowfish, or the Blowfish, the Blowfish, who's a heavy metal marine biologist. That's a title. <laughs> now, why are you called the Blowfish? Oh, it was just a name I picked up at university. One of the lads in the surf club, I had a look at my little beard, my little round head, and he said, you look like a Blowfish, and kind of stuck. And let's have a look. He likes you. Let's have a look at there. Look at there that. You, you do look just like I'm the Blowfish. Canny, mate. <laughs> wow. Now, this is a rainbow boa. Tell me a little bit about it. Why is it called a rainbow boa? Well, as you can see, they've got this wonderful pattern that helps with camouflage. But they've also got this beautiful iridescent shine. Now that comes from microscopic ridges on the scales that make it all rainbow coloured. It's wonderful stuff. Mm. As you can see, she's really calm and really easy to handle. That's why we've got her out today, as opposed to something like, say, an anaconda. And in the wild, she might live up to 25 years old and get up to about ooh, 27 kilograms. That's about the same as, say, 64 cans of baked beans. It's, it's a strong thing. And has Helen liked, liked to have seen one of these? She might have done. They, uh, they're nocturnal, so they tend to stay, stick in their burrows during the day, coming out just only at night to hunt. But they come out down to the river because they are excellent swimmers. So if she's been out for a moonlight walk next to the Amazon, <laughs> she could have spotted <laughs> one. Oh, imagine how Amazon. scary that would be. <laughs> now, these things, do they eat humans and how do they eat? <laughs> no, they don't eat humans. Good. They tend to go for things like rats and uh, small lizards, frogs, that type of thing. But they've got an amazing way of hunting. Mm -hmm. They've got these special pits all around their lips that pick up infrared oh. radiation, and, and that's a posh word for heat for you. And me. <laughs> but what, this information is combined with the snake's vision, mm -hmm. giving it an amazing view on the world. We three here will appear all like red and yellow because we're warm blooded, but a frog or a lizard would appear blue and purple because it's cold blooded. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That is incredible. What a little thing this is. Thank you so much for the moment. Yeah, we'll Beautiful. see you in a little while. No worries, boys. OK, a little later on, we'll might, we're going to be seeing some of the animals Helen might be coming across in the Amazon. But first, she's been out there for four weeks, so I think we should see how she's getting on. Hello. Hope you're all OK. I have had a busy but very exciting week, actually. I've seen loads of wildlife this week. Green iguanas. Yesterday I was surrounded by pink dolphins and last night I was just having my dinner and somebody pointed out that there was a massive caiman alongside our boat. The only thing was it wasn't moving very fast and we kind of thought oh, it should have swam off by now, especially with us all looking at it. But we noticed it had been caught up in a fishing line so it was stuck in one place. So our guide Dudu went down and released it and it swam off quite happily. And I think we all went to bed feeling quite proud of ourselves. I have got a bit of bad news though. The river slowed down a lot, which means it's harder for me to do as many miles in a day. It's choppier and it's windier, so I've got all these extra elements to fight. And it meant yesterday, I was out in my kayak from half five in the morning till eight o'clock at night, just so that I could clock up 60 miles. Because that's what I need to do every day to stay on track with it. So it's getting tough, but I'm making up for it with the wildlife and treats. The other day, I went to a Brazilian carnival. We actually joined in, I was head to toe in samba costume. There's loads of pictures on the Blue Heater website, honestly. It was absolutely hilarious. We had a really good time, so don't feel too sorry for me. Loads more to do though, I'm heading out there in a minute. So I've got to wrap this up, say goodbye, and hopefully I will speak to you soon. Good luck, Helen, we know you can do it. Okay, as you've seen, one of the animals Helen's come across is this dude right here. It's a green iguana. Look at him. He's absolutely massive. Now, mate, am I right in thinking that these guys live in water, or is that just a myth? Uh, well, they do spend quite a bit of time in the water. They are excellent swimmers. Mm. But they actually live well up into the treetops of the Amazon because they're herbivores. So they like chewing on the tasty leaves, flowers, and mm. fruits. But if they feel threatened, bang, whoa, they just jump straight out of the branches, straight into the water. All right, right, right. The biggest predator for these guys are actually hawks. And when they hear that scream or that whistle of a hunting hawk overhead, they just whoop. Yeah, they just freeze. Or a dinosaur. Isn't freeze it? dead stiff. Uh -huh. And um, th that's basically so the hawk can see it. Well, actually, it doesn't do the iguana much good. I mean, if you or I, mm. we wanted to have a go at the iguana, we'd soon find out they've got sharp teeth, strong claws, and they use that beautiful long tail to whip at the eyes and the face of their attacker. 
But for the Hawk, well, they've got something a little special. A little, a little special up their little scaly yeah. sleeve. If the Hawk gets hold of them, gets hold of their tail, they can actually allow it to disattach, to come off. It's a decoy. It keeps the Hawk busy while the Iguana makes good his escape. OK, what's this about a third eye I hear? It's absolutely brilliant. This is what you're doing right now. They have a third eye on top of their heads. It's only basic, telling the difference between, say, light and dark, but it might give them an early warning if the shadow of a hawk suddenly flies overhead. OK, and what other ways are they, are they made to uh, adapt to their environment? Well, the females can lay up to 50 eggs any one time in holes in the ground called burrows. But what she'll do is she doesn't just dig one burrow, she digs multiple burrows no to way. confuse predators. So as we can see, when the baby iguanas hatch out... Yeah, we can see there, yeah. They haven't got mum and dad to rely on, they're on their own. So they have to fend for themselves? They've got to go for themselves, OK, now, that's something completely random. I hear these things were dropping out of trees in Florida. What, what is that about? <sighs> this is a quality story, mate. <laughs> Florida's perfect place for these guys. They love it. Mm -hmm. But the recent cold snap that we all had, they were getting so cold, they couldn't grip onto the branches Are anymore. You serious? <laughs> they were just falling out of the tree. Get in. No, no it's straight up, dude. Yeah. Nothing worse than an iguana falls, falls on your on head while you're trying to get the paper. Oh, no. Health and safety. It's, it's have happened a word. to us all at some time. <laughs> right, now this is a Goliath bird eating spider. Now, they look frightening, are they? Yes. Yes, they are. And Helen will probably be very lucky in the fact she'll never have seen one of these. They oh, tend God. to stick to the marshy, swampy areas, and they're nocturnal, so they don't come out during the day. But look at the size of it. I mean, these guys can get up to 30 centimetres across. That's the same size as a dinner plate, guys. That is, that is ridiculous, size, isn't it? That is big. And the females, they get up to about 25 years old. But it's bad news for us blokes, because the males tend to only make it to about five or six years. And that's why, why, why is that? Well, that's because the males, their only job in life is to mate with the females, and then they die. Sad. Yeah. Well, are they dangerous? How dangerous are these things? Well, they're not lethal to us humans, but yes, they are dangerous. They are big and powerful. Their fangs are almost four centimetres long and they are filled with venom. And we can actually see how dangerous. This is Mark. He is a professional animal hander. Now, watch this. This is how <laughs> we're just going to oh, goad it. Take a step back. Now, watch his fat fangs. No! Oh, it's actually attacking the pencil. Oh, that's scary. It's a serious predator, boys. Mate, stay well clear. And does Come it eat on. birds? Well, it's, it's a bit of a sort of an urban legend, bit of a mock. <laughs> I mean, they're so strong, they'll overpower pretty much whatever they like. So they'll take down lizards, small snakes, that type of thing. They will take nestlings, but they're hardly jumping off the ground, jumping in the air and taking them clean out. So is it dangerous to us humans? Well, although it's not lethal, yes, it is dangerous. Their fangs are up to four centimetres long and they are filled with venom. Yeah. It's only as potent as that, say, of a wasp sting, but they still give you a really nasty bite. To be honest, though, boys, you shouldn't really get bitten by one of these. They let you know when they're not happy. They rub the hairs on their legs together, making a terrible hissing noise. Nah, mate. And they've got this fantastic thing. Can you see there? See there. Yeah, look that at that. Just done? That's an amazing addition to the spider's arsenal. It can flick hairs at you. And I'm not talking, you know, a bit of dandruff yeah. here. <laughs> talking about hairs that are like fiberglass. They're almost invisible, and if you get them around your mouth, in your eyes, it's going to burn. If you get them down into your lungs, well, then you're going to hospital. That's why it's staying in the tank. Hello, staying, staying in the tank. Stay. Nice one. OK, now talk to me about this one you've got here. It's a Mata Mata turtle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Beautiful little creature here. Helen might have seen one of these and not even noticed. They live in the slow-moving rivers and streams. They look so funny. Their back looks almost like that of a rotting they piece look of bark. They're prehistoric, is that? They, well, I suppose they are. But their head and neck, it looks like a, a, an old leaf mm. with the stem of the leaf being that Matamata's long snout. They're fantastic creatures and they ambush their prey when they're not expecting it. As you can see in the pictures there, look at that. Yeah, long snout, they're beautiful. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you so oh, much for coming back. in. Absolutely appreciate it. Mate, you've been an absolute legend. I've learned loads, loads of stuff today. Well, and if you want to keep up with Helen, on her Amazon adventure, why not go to the website? It's a great picture.